what's up guys? My main deck in Clash Royale is back and better than ever. The rank 18 player in the world is piling up pigs and recruits on both sides to rush to the top of the ranks. The deck used to have three spells with Barbarian Barrel, but it got an upgrade with Little Prince. You can still play Barb or Electro Spirit if you don't have Little Prince leveled up. But the added versatility and extra defense that Little Prince offers allows you to go balls to the walls on offense, enabling you to viciously spam recruits at the river or in the back to enhance your evolution cycle. Because if opponents try to spam the river when you recruit in the back, they're going to go right into Goblin Cage, Zappies, or the Little Prince, allowing you to stop their spam and punish them on the counter push. The Little Prince ability has an extra layer of defense for the fly machine allowing the Sneaky Sir to stay alive longer, slide past opponent's defenses, and steal gains. In Clash Royale, some things will never change. Rail recruits will always rule the duel, so let's charge into some games and assert dominance. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on any of the daily videos. A whole lot of love to everyone that's supporting the channel with creator code SIRTAG. This guy's got a hog rider in the banner, and we've got pigs. So we're going to find out who is the superior rider. On green, I'm going for it. I hope that we can go and steal his hog and then add another hog to our arsenal. And then we have six pigs. <laughs> It'd be kind of fun. So, or actually five pigs. I can't do math. I play rail hogs. Recruits is one of my main decks in Clash Royale, and I don't even know how many pigs are in my deck. I'm talented like that. Okay, so unfortunately, this is an executioner, so he'll probably tornado. I'm going to fly machine to snipe it, so then before he tornadoes, he's maybe going to lose the XE. This is really good. Well, actually awful that we got this matchup, but really good that we have the bomb tower and the executioner out of cycle because guess what? Flying machine does not do well. Oh, come on. There is no way that we matched into an executioner fireball bomb tower deck. You, you really are the Grinch. He's giving us that emote because he knows how amazing this matchup is for him. How did he manifest this matchup? The world may never know. <laughs> We have to see if we can win this because this is the worst matchup I've ever gotten in my life. I'm going to go in for the Little Prince ability, try to distract the Executioner. Maybe we can get some extra shots on it. It's not happening. Can we kill it though? Yo, yo, we can kill it with arrows. So this is worth, definitely worth sniping the Executioner, hitting the Electro Spirit and getting an extra value that way. However, the guy has Fireball. So I guess we kind of have to go for Zappies, but they're going to get Fireballed. So I guess I got to go Recruits. He's loving us in the most sarcastic way because he's loving the matchup so much. I hate you. I hate you so much, sir. Don't do this to me. I'm gonna go recruits in the back and then I think I can go in for zappies maybe. Maybe go in for... Oh, wow. Yeah, he's just gonna fireball. I guess I gotta go zappies early and then get him to fireball that. He's gonna executioner instead. Dude, I can't do anything. I literally have to go little prince in the back and then pray that we can finish off the hog rider with this absurdly long range so then we don't get fireballed all at once. That kind of worked, actually. He's going to lose the XE. He's not going to tornado with this, right? He's going to lose the XE to the Zappy and the uh, Little Prince. That's good. We can go for Rail Hogs and then try to go in for a Fly Machine off to the side on the left. And then maybe go for the Little Prince ability if we're feeling really lucky. Oh, yeah. I'm still going to do it because maybe we can hit Skeletons. I don't think it's going to work, but maybe. <laughs> if only I had Electro Spirit, I could make a prediction on Skeletons. He's going to drop them, right? He's going to Electro Spirit instead. Okay. So I guess I wouldn't have made a prediction. We did so much damage on the right. I didn't even acknowledge that. Yo, we'll take that. Let's go, let's go. All right, we're gonna go Goblin Cage in the middle. Usually we drop it right down the, the middle because then the Goblin Cage probably doesn't have to move. But in this particular moment, I think it's better to do it like that. And the Zappy should stop the Hog Rider. Nice. Okay, well, we can go for Rail Hogs and split them. We can also Fireball here on top of the Bomb Tower. And I think that's a little bit better since we catch the Knight too. And then we can go for Rail Hogs as well. We're probably gonna force a Fireball here. I think he has to Fireball the Pigs. Get a Bomb Tower instead. Okay, that makes sense. How do we kill this Hog Rider? Well, we're going to go Little Prince in the back. We're going to force the Hog Rider coming out. And then I guess we go for Goblin Cage in the middle. And then we go Recruits on top. So then we don't get absolutely shredded here. But this is still really bad. Yeah, he's going to Fireball. And then I guess we can Little Prince ability if we needed to. But the Goblin Cage brawler might clutch up. Yo, how does he not get damaged? It's crazy to me. It's baffling, honestly. <laughs> I guess Little Prince on defense is such a good addition to this deck. Because even if you can't break through, your opponent might not be able to either. All right, we're click the Little Prince ability. It, I think it goes through. No, it's not. My elixir is going to get refunded, though. Yo! Fly Machine's on the tower. We're just going to Fireball cycle you right now. Let's go. Okay, Fireball Arrows wins us the game. So I'm just going to wait and chill and relax. Go and cycle our Zappies here. Go Goblin Cage in the middle. And despite this guy having a legitimate hardest counter that I've ever played against my life with Bomb Tower, Executioner, Tornado, and Fireball, he loses to Royal Hogs Recruits. So if I can beat someone like this around top 2,000 in the world, you can beat any deck in the game. You just have to be patient with your recruits. 
constantly throws pushes at your opponent and eventually they'll make mistakes and their entire defense will collapse in their face. Just looking at that matchup scares me. That has to be one of the hardest counters I've faced in months. After conquering the Crucible, we've pushed up to 2,600 in the world. This guy finished around 800 in the world and I'm ready to take on any challenge after that last game. The guy's going to go in for a Miner. I don't necessarily know if it's going to be a Balloon deck, but I assume it will be after seeing Snowball at the start and then Miner cast it on her tower. So I'm going to rush through with the Recruits. He ended up dropping 5 Elixir that he's not going to be able to get back. Obviously, the Miner and the Snowball, they don't really give him that much of a meaningful presence on the map. He dedicates 5 Elixir and gets nothing from them afterward. So if I can go Recruits and punish him or cycle to our Evolution, that's going to be very eventful for us. I could pre arrows on top of Bats, but I didn't know if he's going to do it or not. Also, let's go for Royal Hogs because you're not going to have Bomb Tower and Cycle because he used it on top of the Recruits. Oh, he got back to it. Wow. He's back like he never left. I'm seriously shocked that that is a reality that I just faced. My man is cycling those things like popcorn. <laughs> He's munching on our pigs today. Okay, this is not the movie that we wanted to see. This is not the cinematic experience. Our little prince is just sitting there in the hand and just been like, bro, you should have made my job easier. You should have got more damage for me. But I'm, don't you know who I am? I was going to say, but I'm the king. <laughs> but he's not the king yet. He's a king in the making. <laughs> oh, his, his annoying line is, don't you know who I am? <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. That card is probably the most memeable of all the voice lines in Clash Royale. You guys let me know, what are your favorite voice lines in Clash? What are your least favorite? For me, it has to be the Little Prince and the Little Prince. I hate playing against it when I'm losing because it's just really obnoxious. And when I'm playing it, it's like, haha, my opponent has to deal with it now. <laughs> okay, the Recruit's gonna charge in our opponent's face. That's huge, that's really fun. And then I wonder if we can go in for a Fly Machine or Royal Hogs. Generally, I like doing this because the Fly Machine is gonna be unsupported. It's not gonna give us any value. Or we could go for Rail Hogs in the middle because it'll get directly on top of the Bomb Tower. He's going to Electro Spirit. That's not going to stop our Flying Machine. He has to Valkyrie. Dude, he's tornadoing some of the pigs, but the other two on the right-hand side are just unleashing hell. They're having a great time. All right. So if I Little Prince, I think that'd be slightly too aggressive. I'd rather Goblin Cage instead just to play passive and wait for our right opportunity. If he decides to go in for a Miner, we can Little Prince on it and then go and cycle our Recruits again and just build up bigger and bigger pushes. It's always nice to go Goblin Cage when you want to reset and figure out what your opponent's going to do. Okay, he doesn't even have Balloon. He's going to have Snowball Bomb Tower with Minor Poison. This is a lot better for us, but also a little bit worse because he does kill our recruits with a big spell now. So I don't like that. I'm not an enjoyer, but I am an enjoyer, if you guys know what I mean. So I'm going to go in for a Fly Machine to snipe that Bomb Tower and then use Arrows on top of Skeletons and Electric Spirit, hopefully. Yo, did we catch the Electric Spirit? Let's go! Predictions for days, baby! That's what we like to see. All right, when his Zappy's all on the same side, because it will be able to cannibalize and stun the Valkyrie in perpetuity. And then we can go for recruits in the back or in the front, depending on where our opponent's going to go. Always do split lane pressure, even if you're committed to one side. You want to bait out your opponent's elixir so then you can get damage. If I just keep spamming in one side the entire time, I'm not going to get damage. Because we're forcing the poison there, and now we can go in the side that we actually want. Look at that. It's amazing. Also, I want a fireball on the Valkyrie. Does the Valkyrie just die? Look at its abysmal stats. There is no way that an evolution should die on the opponent's side of the map when evolved skeletons for one elixir can three crown. <laughs> Clash Royale, we need to talk about how you ruined the game from that perspective. <laughs> the evolved Valkyrie just sucks so much. It's really funny. I'm gonna go Royal Hogs to keep our opponent on defense because he's gonna have to drop Bomb Tower and then we can Fireball Arrows and win the game. So it's not like Minor Poison can dig away 1,300 damage. This is a guaranteed W. Oh my gosh, one HP in a dream. And then Piggy puts him out of his misery. He's yawning, he's gonna go straight to sleep. He is not feeling good after that loss. At least he can go sleep in the Holy Garden though. And we're gonna be going up to the ranks to meet him all the way up there at 2,200 in the world. On to the next one, ATR. Dude, you are living in the past. You have a Santa Claus banner. And we're going to deliver the presence of pain with our royal recruits. All right, so let's go and stun his hog rider and shock it. I don't necessarily love dropping zappies on hog rider, but it does full counter besides one hit. It's not that bad. I bet you he's going to have earthquakes. So we're going to royal hogs all on one side. I think this is fine. Oh, he's actually going to have fireball. One pig is left alone, but he still died. <laughs> he's just had the most painful death. The death of seeing his friends die, and then he wasn't able to get the damage right in front of his eyes, his goals, his aspirations. He was a touch away, but he still didn't make our opponent pay. It is what it is. It happens sometimes. So we see a Fireball Mortar Hog Rider deck, which is very interesting. I don't think I've seen anything like this. Usually opponents that are running a Earthquake deck with Hog Rider are going to be running it with Mortar or Bomb Tower. But this guy has got Mortar with Fireball. So he's wildin', safe to say. 
We're gonna go for a Goblin Cage here, and I think that is able to full counter the Hog Rider, but maybe not with the Ice Spear. I don't know. I I, I don't know. It's close. Oh, it's still full. Shuts down the Hog Rider. I was so shocked that I wasn't even able to say words correctly. <laughs> full is hard to say when your breath is full of shock and your air is just sucked out of your lungs. Because that search situation surely didn't suck for us. Oh my gosh, that was funny and fun. I am malfunctioning like a robot a little bit, but hopefully we can walk with a win. Oh, let's go. Our plays are not malfunctioning. Our opponent is getting a whole bunch of bugs in his code as we've decoded the perfect offensive play every single time. Like sniping all those units with the arrows was magical for me. I'm going to have to go in for a fly machine here to be able to finish off the knight so it doesn't get two hits on our tower. I think it would have gotten a lot of damage, but yet again, right before it gets a hit, it gets shut down, just like the Hog Rider. I guess the Knight and the Hog have something in common today. They don't get damage. We like that you're twinning in that direction. So I want to go in for Recruits. I also want to go for Zappies. I think it's going to be a bit better for us to go for Zappies in the back than Recruits right in the face of adversity, right into the Evolution Archers. Also, you might say I'm a fool for doing this, but I am eating the Mortar because I don't care. Yes, guys, I just said that. Legitimately, it's better for us to just eat the damage because we've taken damage to the left and then get better counter push. What is he going to do when recruits barrel their way through when he has no elixir? I don't know, guys. I guess it'll be funny to watch out and find out. So we're going to go Goblin Cage here, and we've got the recruits. We've got also Royal Hogs as well if we want. Yeah, let's split them up and then get back to arrows, I think. Yo, he still doesn't get damage. He's going to have to go in for a mortar, which we can fireball and also collapse on top of the archers. This is huge. If I arrowed, I wonder if that would have been worth. The Cage Brawler is still going to give us value. We're going to go Zappies right in the face of the Hog Rider. This guy is playing really well, punishing me when I have a low amount of Elixir, but I don't think he gets two hits. No, yeah, he doesn't. That's cool. I was looking at it. I was like, ah, I might have lied to everyone live in 4K. I'm sorry, but then uh, it worked out, so we're chilling. <laughs> I always get so nervous because I call it on the spot and I better be right, you know? All right, we're going to go for Fly Machine to go with Sniper to force out arrows, hopefully. Or fireball yeah there's the fireball we can go for arrows afterward it's not gonna kill it's not gonna kill the archer but maybe maybe we can just put the archer into range that we can ignore it so that mortar is interesting because it's not gonna give him any damage on the side that he wants we can go for our little prince in the back and get ready for him to go for his hog rider when he drops it we go in for our cage and then we go recruits immediately so the reason why we're gonna be playing a little bit more defensively in this position is because we don't want the archer to lock on our tower i think that's the only way that i guarantee a loss here wait the skeleton's on my tower what the heck How's that doing so much damage? What the, that's, just, that's just garbage, man. Get that out of here. All right, we're going to go for Rail Hogs and try to split them before he fireballs. <laughs> that was one of the like most aggressive plays I've done in a minute. It might still work out. We do have a lot of value coming through, and we can arrows? Yo, little prince! You are a monster. You are a big prince today. You graduated, my dude. All right, cool. We can go in for recruits, and then we can go for fly machine. He'll probably fireball in here, so let's go for zappies. Because if he kills the flying machine, then he knows that he can just lock onto our tower. And obviously, I'm not going to let that happen because I'm not bad at the game. Or I like to think that I'm not bad at the game, all right? Go for Royal Hogs. We're going to force the fireball. Wait, he already fireballed on that. No, he doesn't have fireball. I think he might just lose, right? We're going to force out a mortar, and then we can fireball arrows and win. All I have to do is focus on defending. And when you've got recruits, it is an ultimate bailout. This is the cheat code to Clash Royale. You drop your recruits on defense, and then you pretend to not know how to play the game. You just take your hands off, you do a little bit of a jiggle, you can dance, you can do whatever you want, and you just watch as your piggies prance as you run away with a victory. It's so easy, guys. It's like the No Handlebars song from my childhood, because the recruits always have it handled on defense, as our opponent is forced to hand over the win, as we ride up the ranks to 2,000 in the world. Hey, we got a game against someone that finished 105 in the world. And you know what? I'm feeling that this game will finally be the match that we don't play against Bomb Tower. At least that's what I'm praying for. Clash Royale, I deserve it at this point. <laughs> I want an easier matchup. The guy's going to go Little Prince in the back, so that is not going to bode extremely well for us. We can't necessarily annihilate it with a fireball and arrows very effectively. But I bet you that this is going to be an Electro Giant deck. If we see Archers and Little Prince, most of the time it's E-Giant. So I want to go through with our Rail Hogs here, and I think that's a bit aggressive, but I think it's okay as well. We go into a bowler, it's not bad. We can Little Prince on his Little Prince, and then we're going to be able to kill his Little Prince, and we won't lose our entire tower here, right? Because his Little Prince is going to have to reset. He will activate King Tower, though, so not necessarily the best start for us. 
However, we are going to be up a bit of damage. He's going to have King Tower activation. We're going to go for our Fly Machine to counter the Bowler. He's going to get damage on the side that he doesn't want to because he wants to accumulate everything on the right. So everything's going to be all right for me. We are playing against a top 105 player in the world, so obviously I have to focus a lot. Y'all already know if he's going to go Archers, we will immediately arrow. I knew that he was going to have that card cycle, so we were mentally prepared for the possibility, and we pummeled him. And then we collect our free damage. So if he decides to Electro Giant immediately, because, you know, he's going to be up a bit of Elixir, we're just going to go in for a Goblin Cage, pull it as far as possible. If he's going to go for a Barbro, we will go for Zappies, because I think that's the right move. It's going to be four Elixir for two, so essentially it's going to be a two-off Zappies, half price. Really shopping at Costco in bulk out here. And we're ready to go and use bulk up with our recruits to defend against all of his spam. It's such a strong card on defense. I personally prefer to drop recruits on defense compared to dropping them on offense because you just get more value with the counter push because your opponent's going to be at lower amounts of elixir. Look at this pristine goblin cage placement. If you don't know, you best believe that you're going to start doing this placement because you will get so much more value. Also, I'm not a fan of using that goblin cage plus lightning here because like, oh man. That lightning just shattered my little prince and allowed the bowler to get so much more damage. But at sight, it does happen in Clash. You just have to live with it. Well played by our opponent with the Evolved Archers too, because I think he's going to split up and assassinate a lot of Elixir here as well. You know what? What if I go in for recruits on top of the Archers? Because the Archers will just die, and then we can go for dual lane pressure. I don't think this is bad for us. I don't think this is absolutely as abysmal as you might assume. I'm going to Fireball on top of his little prince. Little prince is going to get reset from that. We could arrows on it, but... I don't want to do that. Man, we're looking like this is going to be an L. I don't want to lose this, though. I really don't want to lose this game. I'm going to Little Prince here. I'm going to get ready with Zappies, and then I can go in for a Goblin Cage to pull this as far as possible. I can also Arrows on top of the Little Prince. He's going to Tornado. I don't think that was a good Nato at all. But at the same time, maybe he's going to be fine. <laughs> I totally hope that that's not the case. Okay, we are going to be able to kill the Bowler. We have Little Prince still counter pushing the left. Let's click the ability so we can kill the Barbril. Uh, combined with our recruit, I might be able to kill it. Nice. That's beautiful. He's going to dro go drop his little prince ability. Oh, our guardian's on the tower. And he has the tornado to guard it. Okay, cool. We can fly machine here. We can eat a bunch of damage on the left from his little prince because it doesn't matter to me. If it locks onto my tower, that's actually ideal so we can keep our fly machine healthier. And then we can go in for a fireball if we want to on top of the cannon so we can get more damage. I think we're going to force out a lot of elixir here. I don't know if the bowler hits everything. He's going to have to go archers as well. Please, let this fly machine lock. He wasn't ready. Okay, well, I'm, I'm not going to win yet. I'm not winning yet. Oh my gosh, what do I do? I think I go in for a little prince and I retain my zappies and fly machine. He's going to be able to counter the bowler. And then I can go royal hogs. He's going to have to electro giant soon. That lightning was bad. That lightning was really bad on his end. He has no elixir. He's going to have to go for cannon. Let's pre-fire bullet. And then we can arrows and I think we just win. Please? Yeah, that's enough. We win. Let's freaking go. The bounce back is real against the bowler that always knocks us back. That top 105 player in the world just got his towers toppled by the power of pigs. You already know we want to be spamming our recruits, but we never get them in our starting hand today. I guess it's banning me from doing the most skillless strategy of just spamming the recruits in the back and giving the thumbs up and being like, hey, we're praying towards a win. But it doesn't really work like that. You have to cycle to them and then it's just a little bit less stellar for you as you're slowly making your way towards victory instead of storming the towers with your charging recruits. Oh, no, 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 no. No, don't do this to me. Don't be running Elixir Golem right now. I cycle my fly machine. Thank goodness he went for a Mega Minion there. I am so happy that happened. If he didn't just like all in me, then we can defend and we're not screwed. Sometimes when you have a bad card cycle, it is very annoying playing against recruits into a Golem or Elixir Golem deck. It's got to be Elixir Golem now after we see Fireball. So he'll probably not have Battle Healer. I bet you he's going to have Barbarians and Skeleton King and Goblin Gang. So let's go in for our recruits and get ready with arrows if he goes Goblin Gang. If he goes e -barbs, that's interesting. Huh, let's click the ability of our little prince. We might be able to get some monstrous value. Let's go! Knocking back the Barbarians! He doesn't even care about defense. It's not in his vocabulary. As you guys can see, the recruits are doing so much work. It gets me fired up beating the Elixir Golem players. Also, he's got Lumberjack, so maybe he's not running Elixir Golem. I'm so confused right now. He's got cards that make me think Elixir Golem like Fireball. And then he's just shimming in a different direction with a Lumberjack that is typically only played in Golem. So maybe he's going to run something else. Oh, okay. Never mind. It's just Golem. All right. All right, dude. I was playing Who's That Pokemon for way too long. Anyway, I'm going to go for Royal Hog since we do have one Zappy. It's ideal for us to go and combat that tower, force out more Elixir, and provide more power. Also, I bet you he goes in for a Night Witch and all-ins me. I bet you that's what he does. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. 
So, Little Prince is going to be our number one A1 defense here. And then I think we can go for Fly Machine on top of the Night Witch Bats. I don't know if that's the right play, though. I don't think so anymore. We got to go recruit so that we can counter the E-Barbs. We don't get to pull them all back, do we? Oh, we do. Let's go. Also, Little Prince is still putting in work. No way. Easy arrows value. Recruits are the bailout on defense, baby. And I think we might even be able to three crown them later, but we just need to defend one more push. All right, guys, we're going to try a three crown. As I said before, that's what we're doing. He went golem in the back. So it's time to go in for the win. All right, we're going to fly machine as well. I, I don't think he's going to defend this. I feel like he just doesn't care. He's one of them. He really do be one of them. Oh my gosh, he's dead. He's actually dead, right? We can go in for a little prince as well. Click the ability in the middle. Watch how derpy this is. Watch how disgustingly derpy this is. It's too much fun to pass up on. We're going to go for rail hogs as well. He's going to arrows. I, I'm not going to try to defend that tower because that's not how I play. We go in for the win, baby. Uh, is this stupid? Am I dumb? I don't think so. I think it's fireball and win. Fireball and win, right? Yeah, we win. Okay. So, a little bit more sketchy of a situation at the end. But we did pull ahead with the win. The Night Witch was on our three crown. I could have just fully focused on defense at the end for a clean 1-0 victory. But where's the fun in that? When you can take all the crowns, unleash utter devastation, and assert total dominance. That skillless golem spam deck is so used to three crowning, so it deserved a taste of its own medicine. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more daily videos, and I hope you have a royal rest of your day.